we have established that I love the Olympics. That yeah, is a well-known true. podcast fact. Yeah. Adam cries when the national anthem plays. 100%. They, yeah. yeah. This is an Olympic year. Paris 2024. And that's, that's going to be a good one in Paris. Okay. I'm excited about it already, <laughs> as you can tell. I love it when there's Tar Heels who potentially have the opportunity to compete in the Olympics. And one of those is Lachlan McNeil, who's with us today. A wrestler, in addition to all he does for Carolina Wrestling, you also might see him in Paris. We'll find out more about that, Jones. Okay. Right now, Lachlan, tell us what's going on with Carolina Wrestling. Lachlan's hot from a conditioning session this morning. Yeah. When you say you had a little conditioning this morning, what does that mean in the wrestling world? Uh, probably consists of about 45 minutes. Uh, it was almost 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it was more circuit-based today. So um, high interval intensity training. Uh, Tony Ramos, the associate coach, put us through it. And anyone who knows Tony's workouts, they're known for being brutal. So, mm. yeah. So Lachlan's a little low on the energy level. We'll have to bring <laughs> him back up. Don't worry. Adam goes through high intensity circuits yeah. on a pretty regular basis. If even by Lachlan's standards they were brutal, yeah. I feel that I probably would have passed out yeah. very early on. No doubt. Lachlan, take us through the year so far. What's been going on? Obviously, a big change with wrestling this year at the head coaching position. Just take us through what what the last couple of weeks have been like for the wrestling team. Uh, been interesting. Um, the second semester is going to be a lot more home duels, so a little bit less travel. Uh, our first semester, we went out to Vegas. We've been we've been traveling a lot, um, so it was definitely tiresome. By the time we got done with Soldier Salute in Iowa, um, so I think it's we had a bit of break. We had a good little winter break in Florida. And um, I think for the rest of the semester, staying home and just training will kind of refresh our team going into ACCs and Nationals. What do you feel like is going to get better with more time to kind of focus on yourself? Wrestling-wise? Team-wise, yeah. Or team-wise. I think personally, I think um, just having that week as a team to bond and then also just to evaluate how that first semester went gives you the adjustments that you need to make going into these these next couple of duels as well as conference championships and the national championship so i think a lot of our guys are really just they're starting to focus on whatever individually they need to work on and i think the acc season is the perfect type of duels to practice that we were talking earlier this week you've already beaten nine ranked opponents this year what do you feel like you're doing well individually it's interesting because I've, I think I've gotten maybe two or three in the top ten, and I've beaten up other, other ranked opponents. I think when I was looking back personally at my first semester, I was winning matches, but the style in which I was wrestling and I was winning, is it's not going to get it done in March. So um, I, I, I'm strong, very strong defensively. Um, however, I need to build more of an offensive style, and I think that if I can get to people's legs, I will always score. And if I can get to people's legs and I can start to turn more on top, that that's the, the type of wrestling I need to – continue in order to win a national title okay wait why won't that why won't the style that you have done and that is one you some why won't that translate to march it won't because well first of all i mean that's part of the reason why i lost the first two this year right um to to jack from state and then woods from iowa and i think the one against woods at soldier salute was really eye-opening because it started off a little rocky he came out really hard and he caught me with two takedowns which i believe if we wrestled again, probably wouldn't happen. But I think the thing that stood out to me when, when it was when I was reviewing the match in the second period, it was almost like uh, there was no offense there. So it's like, how do we, how did I plan to win that? Right? right? When you're down by three or four and you're not really shooting, you're not really getting anyone's legs. It was a major hole that I think was exposed, and it's something that I know I needed to work on anyways. But having that loss really, you know, um, there's a lot more emphasis on it now. That's like it's like Virginia basketball. It's like they've gotten down. <laughs> what, how do they expect to win? They can't <laughs> score. Um, like, is there? Obviously, you're very close to the dude that you're wrestling while it's happening. Yeah. Is there ever any chatter? Do you guys, Is there any talk in a match? Or is it all just like you guys are just like focused in and it's happening? There's never really any talk. It doesn't seem like there is, no. which I would think there would be, but I, it, I'm obviously wrong. No, no, there's never really any talk. I've, I've, I've had a lot of people ask me about that, but no, it never seems to be. You just got to focus on what's happening. Yeah, I think everyone's just so focused on what's going on at the moment. That, yeah. Yeah. What what would even wrestling trash talk be like? Because like you have the ability to do all the things that other people just talk trash about doing. Like you wouldn't say like I'm about to crush you because like you could actually do it. Yeah. Like I'm going to take your legs out. Yeah. That, that, yeah. You don't have to say it. You just execute it. Um. Okay. Transition to the head coaching position. What was that like? As I have to imagine that's a little discombobulating as a member of the team. Like, what were your thoughts? What were your feelings as all that went down? Uh, it was it was chaotic for sure. Um, and for it to happen so late, 
um, it was basically what started most of the chaos, right? Yeah. Um, since Rob's been here, I think Rob's phenomenal. I think he's great, and I think he's really going to do great things with this program. Uh, at the time, I was actually training in Chicago with uh, a member of the Serbian national team, and there was a short little international training camp going before the World Championships. And as being one of the leaders and the captains on the team, obviously, once you have that meeting, everyone comes to you and they're asking what's going on. So I was trying to focus on my own training, but at the same time, I got to deal with what's going on back home. And it was, yeah, it was just a lot. But I think the team stayed very strong. And if anything, we bonded over the two, three weeks before we had a new head coach. Sure. And um, since then, it's obviously been a transition, right? When you have a essentially a whole new coaching staff, it's going to take time to to get used to that and to make adjustments. But I think our team... He's doing fairly well with that. What have you learned about Coach Cole that you obviously just couldn't have known beforehand because you didn't know him? What what have you learned here over the last first couple of months with him here? Obviously, he's very intelligent. I think he's he's very good at recruiting. He's very um yeah very good with recruiting, but also I think he's less emotional than most wrestling coaches. I think when you think of a wrestling coach, you think of someone when there's a bad loss, they're very emotional. He's very he's emotionally intelligent. He's smart. He gives short feedback. He tends to stay more on the positive side. You know, he gets on people when he needs to get on people, but everything is very constructive with him. Hmm. With wrestling, and you just kind of touched on this, when you have your college team responsibilities, but then you also have international responsibilities, which are a little more individual, but also national team based. How do you balance all these things when they're all happening at the same time? It's, it's difficult. It's definitely difficult. Um, and I'm just, Thankful that I have a, a coaching staff that's very supportive of it, right? For example, in December, in that month alone, we started off going to Vegas. I was playing ping pong with the coast. So I went to Vegas, then <laughs> came back to Chapel Hill. Then I had to go out west uh, to Edmonton for the Olympic trials. Then I had to come back, and then we went to Iowa. So it gets, it's a high-paced lifestyle. It's, it's tiring at times. But having a coaching staff that's supportive of you, and, you know, Tony told me, hey, do you need me to go to Canada with you? And I was like, no, this time I don't. But he, they'll always be there whenever I need them. All right, take us through this, the Olympic experience, what you've been going through to try and qualify. Like, Just keep us up or get us up to date on that whole experience and kind of where you are in, in the process right now. Okay, so in December, I went to Olympic trials. So now I am on the Canadian Olympic team. However, now the next goal is to qualify for the Olympics. Uh, the qualifier will be, I believe, either the week in between ACC's or between our last duel with Duke and then the ACC championships because there's a two-week break in between there. However, there's also the Pan Am championships the week of Duke mm. in which if you go there, you can compete to get ranking points, which will help your seating in the bracket for the following weekend. Okay. So currently we're still debating whether we'll go to the championships. We'll for sure go to the, the qualifier, but at the qualifier, you have to place top two in order to qualify. Gotcha. So does, does, is wrestling an ACC schedule good preparation for – international competition like is that helping you train or is it kind of an extra thing that's i don't want to say in the way of training but like it, it's something you wouldn't be doing if you were solely training i understand what you're saying if um it's in a way i think this year it, it helps because i think of the acc season my tougher duels are earlier so i get those good matches and and the other ones like duke and virginia they're ones that i think that as i can miss with the team and, and the team can still really perform well um and it also gives me a good two, three week break to really transition in freestyle wrestling, which is a different style than folk style, right? Um, so I'll have a two, three week base to transition back into freestyle going into potentially the Pan Am Championships and the qualifier. How does one, like, how did you realize this was something you liked that you were good at? Like, it's, I wouldn't think it's just something naturally that somebody's like, yeah, I'm going to go wrestle somebody. Like, how did you get into it? So my, my father actually wrestled and mm -hmm. he was, he was an Olympian. He went to uh, the Olympics in 1992, Barcelona. Awesome. Uh, so growing up, we did a bunch of different sports. Um, it was actually funny. Growing up in the Middle East, they didn't really have any wrestling. So my father and a former team of his kind of started the first kind of club there, right? Because Abu Dhabi, as we were talking about before, Abu Dhabi is known for jiu-jitsu. Mm. Um, and, and they have great competition there, but they don't have any wrestling. At least when we were growing up, they didn't. So we, we started a club there, and my dad would just teach me and my little brother, and I'd obviously wrestle with my brothers, and that's how we got into <laughs> I it. I bet those were some <laughs> intense uh, yeah. uh, sessions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Okay, so you have a very diverse background. We were talking about this off the air before we started. So take us, like, you've been all over the place. Take us through all, all these different spots. So I was born in, in Bahrain, and um, I lived there for four to five years. That's where I was grow growing up. And from there we moved to 
Abu Dhabi, UAE, and then again lived there for another four or five years. I moved over to Canada when I was 10, 11, and I moved to Toronto. I lived there through middle school, most of high school, uh, and then my last two years of high school, I went to a preparatory school in, in Pennsylvania. It was called Wyoming Seminary. They gave me a chance to wrestle there, and so I wrestled there for two years, and that allowed me to make a smoother transition into college wrestling. What do you remember about Abu Dhabi? Like, what what stands out to five to ten year old Lachlan about that time? Heat. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little warm. different than Toronto. Oh, it was. Yeah, we went from the two extremes: extreme hot to extreme cold. But it was. Yeah, I remember that we used to play a lot of different sports. Like I said, we used to play rugby. We used to play football a lot, or, or soccer. And um, go to the beach. It was warm weather, different food, completely different culture. Um, yeah, it was. It was definitely unique. How do you? Like, how are all those different stops pieces of you now? Because they are really diverse places that you've been. I would think that would give you a lot of different experiences. For sure. It gives you different experiences. I think it allows me to have the ability to relate to different people, right? I have a different perspective on various areas of the world that I think a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it just makes you a little bit more diverse and well-rounded, ultimately. Living in Toronto as a middle schooler and a high schooler, how did you how did you find the best competition to wrestle against to get you ready for for prep wrestling and, and the top level of college wrestling? So that's all all to do with my dad. Um, in in Canada, wrestling is not nearly as popular, and it, unfortunately, is also not nearly as successful as in the United States. And so, when we were growing up, we would wrestle the same kids continuously. Uh, the bracket would be much smaller, and it'd be the same kids year after year. And so, my dad claims that he he would take us down to the U.S. more to humble us because we thought we were the man, um, <laughs> and he's probably right. <laughs> but yeah, it's my dad was just very dedicated. He understood that we were kind of the big fish in a small pond right now, and he just wanted to see where we're at with with the best. So he would drive us down. We'd get to training camps, and we started in the Northeast, and then. Before you knew it, we're going all all around the U.S. You know those kids in Canada are like, oh, God, Lachlan again. <laughs> Bro, okay, here we go. Um, how'd you end up at Carolina from all these different stops? Just um, my junior year. At the end of my junior year, uh, my dad and I were, were going through the recruiting process because I, was, I wasn't the number one kid in the country, but I was, I was highly ranked. And um, my dad's a very analytical person, um, and so he started – formula out a spreadsheet and we looked at all the schools and <laughs> we had all the different factors that we wanted and Carolina was um was one of the the best choices for us just because of the academic and the athletic mix sure obviously the weather um the college experience down here um and so we ended up reaching out to Coleman at the time Coleman and Tony uh, and then Coleman called me back and was like oh I was just about to call you which <laughs> I'm not too sure whether that was the case or not but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll roll with it sure. <laughs> yeah well we will roll with it uh and then took a visit and and uh yeah I just knew this was the place for me for sure when you think of all those long drives with your dad now, do you think about like the wrestling or do you think about the drives? The drives for sure. For sure. I think, um, and he's touched on it before. I think part of that for him was just another way for him to connect with us. Right. And, um, yeah, the drives are always fun. How do you manage the cauliflower ear? I would think it would be extraordinarily uncomfortable. It is. I mean, it's difficult at the time because once the ear blows up, it's extremely painful. Yeah. But once you drain it and the Carter's forms, I, don't, I can't feel anything. I could pinch my ears. You can rip them. Ahead. Like, I, there's, no, there's no feeling in them. I will not be doing that <laughs> I don't to you, think I will. I'm going to pass on that. <laughs> I'm afraid of the ramifications. Yeah, I don't think I want to mess with that. Okay, so what are the next, like, what are the next couple steps for you? What, what is in the immediate future? What, what's coming up next? Uh, we have probably a, a hard week of training, my guess, this week. And then next Friday, we have the Virginia Tech Duel at Virginia. Um, at seven, and then we have Navy, I believe, home on the Sunday, and then it's just from there. It's really just the ACC season uh, until the last duels, where it will be more freestyle transition stuff for the qualifying for the Olympics. Sure. When people hear this and say, "I want to follow Lachlan and I want to keep up with him as both Carolina wise and international wise," what's the best way for them to know what's going on in your world as we get towards Olympics, Pan Am Games, things like that? Uh, I would say UNC Wrestling, UNC Wrestling Twitter. Obviously, my personal Lachlan McNeil will, will be following. Like, I'll be posting stuff about that. Um, but, yeah. I have one more thing for, like, representing your country. And I know you're not, I know you're not 100% qualified there just yet. But, like, how, is, is that exciting? Is it pressure? How do, you, how do you approach that? I think it's just exciting. It's, um, like, I'm honored to do it. 
right? I take it as an opportunity. I've wrestled, I've been representing my country since I was 16 years old, right? I've just going through all the age group, uh, world level tournaments and international tournaments. So it's something that I've kind of gotten used to, but it's, yeah, I, I take great pride in it. So I, I enjoy wrestling for Team Canada. I like O Canada. That's a good song. <laughs> do, you get te- do, you tear up, do you tear up when you hear it? If you're like on the podium, do you tear up? I've heard it a couple times, yeah. I yeah, don't tear that's up. all right. It's okay. Well, we're all friends here. We can talk about it. A little emotional. No, I wouldn't say I'm not more. I'm not really a tear up, but it just it fills me with pride. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are the other guys on the team the same guys you used to dominate in those brackets in Toronto? Uh, the, so I'm actually probably the youngest mm. on the team right now, or second youngest, right? Um the for from the Olympic team, I'm going through it right now. Yeah, I, I actually am. I am the young. No, second young. Second young. Yeah, he's yeah. the young whippersnapper that yeah. these old guys are like. He's not taking my spot. <laughs> are you potentially going to have to do like rookie duties or like get the snacks for the team or something? No, because <laughs> I, no, that's not going to happen. 